Hello to everyone. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation to participate in this uh, workshop. My name is José Luis Guzmán from the University of Almería in Spain and the results uh, presented in this uh, talk is a joint work with Professor Tore Haglund from the Lund University in Sweden. So in this presentation I would like to summarize you the results of about 10 years uh, of work about uh, the design of tuning rules for C4 compensators, which are mainly combined with uh, a PAD control to deal with the measurable disturbance and rejection um, and problem. So when we uh, talk about C4 control, we usually think in the classical control scheme, the one you can see here in the slide, where a FIFO compensator is designed in open loop by using this equation, dividing the dynamics relating the disturbance signal with respect to the process output over the dynamics relating the control signal uh, uh, with the process output. And then thanks to this simple design, uh, we are able to completely reject the effect of the disturbance signal in comparison with just using only a feedback uh, controller. However, as we can see from here, in order to uh, calculate the feed forward compensators, uh, uh, we need to uh, calculate the inverse of PU, of the dynamics relating the, the control signal with the respect to the process output. And this is sometimes not possible at all be because of several reasons like uh, delay inversion problems or the presence of uh, no minimum phase uh, uh, zeros um, and some others. Then when we uh, have that uh, problem uh, and we implement the classical control scheme only using the realizable part, what we obtain is the result that we can see here in, in that line. Is that we don't get a very good response anymore. We are not able to reject the disturbance completely but we obtain a strange uh, response with uh, uh, some overshoot. So what I'm going to show you during this talk is that we are able to properly tune the feed forward compensators and be able to just save the response of the closed loop uh, dynamics with respect to the measurable uh, low disturbance um, problem according to different uh, metrics. Then, uh, in the last 10 years, as I told you before, Tore Hagler and I uh, were working in this topic and as a result, uh, we obtained more than 15 different tuning rules to deal with this uh, uh, problem uh, with the idea of just using uh, the classical control scheme or the Brosilov control scheme that I will uh, mention you later on. And then we, we have uh, nowadays a collection of more than, here you can see 12, but in total we have 15 tuning rules that can be uh, designed, designed based on the process parameters and to improve the uh, process response with respect to different uh, metrics. So in this presentation, uh, I would like to show you the motivation to develop these tuning rules. Uh, how we obtain uh, those tuning rules and also uh, some results about the, the impact of the tuning rules on the process uh, uh, output uh, and also some insights about how according to the different control schemes we have and the different tuning rules we also have uh, now, how can we select one or another? Um, what is the, the, the improvement of one on another uh, uh, for a given uh, objective. So uh, let me first to introduce you some uh, sort of preliminaries. Uh, during the presentation, we will consider first order system and plus time delay. It doesn't, this doesn't mean that all our processes should be spe specifically uh, represented by this type of function, but at least our processes should be approximated by uh, these dynamics. Then uh, we will consider a PA controller 
and we will use lambda method as Turing rule to calculate the PI controller. And typically we will use this uh, equation to obtain the lambda value, the closed loop time constant of the lambda method uh, in order to obtain uh, non oversuit in the in the closed loop uh, uh, response. So on the other hand, if we consider the classical control scheme, the FIFO work classical control scheme, we can easily obtain this closed loop uh, dynamics for the low, uh, low uh, disturbance rejection problem. And from here we can see that making the numerator equal to zero, we can obtain the, the, the classical equation for the feed forward compensator that we saw uh, before. And in this talk, we will use a leak lag compensator uh, for the feed forward uh, controller. And using the first of the dynamics that I presented you before, this is the, the, the classical design that we um, can use uh, to obtain the feed forward uh, uh, controller. So now uh, let me use an example to motivate uh, uh, what happened in those cases where uh, we can observe uh, inversion problems in the calculation of the uh, FIFA work compensator. So for that, uh, let's use the following example uh, with this first of the dynamics for PD and PU. And then, as I mentioned you before, we will use the lambda method to, to, to tune the PI controller. As we can see here, the time delay for PD is smaller than the one in, for PU. And therefore, when we calculate the fee forward compensator, we cannot uh, add any uh, delay as we will obtain a positive delay in, in this case. So here in this figure, we are simulating two cases. One case is the closed loop dynamics for the classical control scheme, which is so in dot line. Um, on the other hand, we are simulating uh, just the fee forward compensator, but disconnecting the feedback controller. I mean, yeah, it's just working with the open loop response, just using only the fee forward compensator. From here, is, we can see something which is very interesting. Uh, as you can see, the respond response obtained for the open loop case is much better than the one obtained in closed loop. So this got of uh, our attention some years ago and we realized that something was happening in those cases because it, does, it doesn't make sense that in open loop the response, the response of, of, of the system is, uh, is better than the one in closed loop. And then we started to, to analyze the, the, the equations and the schemes and everything and we realized the, the following. The reason of that behavior is that when we design a fee forward compensator, uh, we design it in open loop and we expect that the load disturbance is going to be perfectly rejected. And therefore the, fee, the FIFA comp, uh, controller uh, will not get any uh, effect of the disturbance in closed loop. However, when we have inversion problems and this term cannot be done zero anymore, the, just the result of this operation is feedback into the loop. And then the feed forward compensator is not designed in open loop anymore, as we have an intera interaction now between the feedback controller and the feed forward compensator that wasn't expected in advance. So this 10, which is not zero any, anymore, is what we said, we call, sorry, a residual 10, and is uh, the responsible of this oversuit in the response. So from here, we can see that now we have an interaction between the feedback and the feed forward controller, uh, controllers uh, that wasn't expected. And then we should take into account that interaction in the design of a feed forward. Uh, control scheme. Uh, this idea can be uh, easily observed uh, following the previous uh, example. Uh, uh, remember the dynamics that we uh, used before. And here we are going to analyze uh, what happened with this residual term. Uh, in the upper uh, picture, we are showing the response of PD in solid line, solid line. 
and in dotted line uh, we are uh, representing the, the, the PU multiplied by the fee forward compensator. Uh, and here in the upper uh, figure is just the difference between these two uh, signals. Uh, we can see from here uh, the only way that we have to modify the res this response is by just uh, playing with the fee forward compensator and therefore playing with this response. But here what we are, we are seeing is the response of the classical design for the fee forward compensators. So what happened when the disturbance arrives into the system? The disturbance arrives into the system, so it's taking one second to affect to, through PD to the process output. This is the effect of the PD. So it's taking one second to affect to the process output. And then on the other hand, the disturbance signal is uh, going through this path always, also, sorry. Uh, and then as we can see the difference between these two time delays is taking two seconds until we can do anything on the process output. And these two seconds are the ones you are observing in this response. So we cannot do anything at all after this after these two seconds, and then after that the FIFO compensator is able just to compensate the effect of the disturbance and to reject uh, 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 the effect of that signal. However, we are late and we cannot just using the classical control uh, this FIFO control design we cannot just modify. The, that uh, the state of that response. However, here uh, we got some motivation in the past. Uh, we realized that we could modify this response, making it faster or slower, and obtaining the following responses that you can see here. This is the same example where we uh, just increase the pole of the fee forward compensator and decrease the pole of the fee forward compensator. As uh, you can see here, we were able to modify the, the shape of this uh, 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 cure and uh, as a result, you can improve the closed loop response of the system. So we realized that there is room for improvement and then we could tune a fee forward compensator to improve the response of the closed loop system. So uh, after uh, realizing that possibility, we checked the uh, bibliography, the literature, and we realized that uh, there was only a couple of solutions in the literature. The typical solution used in industry when you have inversion problems is just to use an static fee forward compensator and neglecting the rest of the dynamics. And on the other hand, another interesting approach that you can find in the literature is the use of uh, which is called the non-interactive control scheme. The idea was proposed by Brosilov and uh, Joseph Babu, and it was very clever. Uh, science, what they did was just, they took the residual term and they added the residual term with positive sign in this path in such a way that that residual sign that we observed before in the example that is feedback into the loop with negative sign is also added here with positive sign, so it's cancelled. Thanks to this control scheme, there is, not, there is not any interaction now between the feedback controller and the fee forward compensator and you can just design the fee forward compensator for uh, forgetting that overshoot that we observed before. However, even in this case, there is room for improvement, as you will see uh, now. So based on the previous analysis and the preliminary um, ideas, uh, we started working on this topic. It's a really, a really motivated uh, problem. And we propose different tuning rules for the two fee forward control schemes. The classical scheme, in this case, remember, we have an interaction between the fee forward compensator and the feedback controller. So it's something that we should take into account in the design. And on the other hand, if we use the non-interactive uh, control scheme, thanks to the H block, 
uh, we can separate the interaction. We can remove the interaction between the controllers in such a way that now we can focus the design of the FIFO compensator in open loop. So uh, according to this, uh, we develop uh, different tuning rules for different inversion problems and different objective. Our objective was just to improve the process output response with respect to different criteria, trying to reduce completely the overshoot or trying to minimize the integral absolute error of the integral square error. As a conclusion, we obtained 15 different tuning rules that are summarized uh, in the next slide and also was summarized at the beginning of the talk and that you can just check in the, in the uh, uh, publication here uh, at the bottom. During this presentation, I will focus only on the uh, time delay inversion problem that was the example that I presented you before. And my, the idea will be just to use the same example and so how the different tuning rules can improve the, the, the response. So uh, in this table, you can see a summary of the different tuning rules. Uh, and then uh, here you have the, the number of the rules in C means that we are using the classical control scheme and in B the Brosilov control scheme or the non-interactive con control scheme. And here are the three different parameters of the Ligla compensator or in some cases we are using a static FIFO compensator and uh, as, as those cases that you can see here with the line with some lines for the pole and zero of the of the Ligla compensator. So so depending on the objective that you have in this column, you will get different values for the different parameters according to the metric you want to uh, achieve and according to the control scheme you want to use. So um, in order to show you the idea uh, about how we calculate these Turing rules, of course, uh, we don't have enough time here to analyze everything into detail, but uh, let me just give you some insights about the, those tuning rules to uh, minimize the integral absolute error. As we uh, saw before, remember that uh, because of the delay inversion problem, we obtain a, a, a response like this. Because of the residual term, we observe that there is some oscillation in the response, but this is interesting to see that in those cases, uh, the response is getting only one oscillation and the curve is crossing the zero or the reference only once. So uh, from this analysis, it, it can be uh, uh, very interesting to, to check what happened with the integral absolute error. And it's the following. First, if we calculate the integral error of this response, we obtain this expression, which is very interesting in the sense that if we design the FIFO compensator in the classical way, which is by dividing uh, the, the gain of the disturbance over the gain of the main process dynamics, the integral error is zero, which is correct and means that we will reject completely the disturbance uh, signal. But on the other hand, this also means that according to this response, the area A1 and A2 are exactly the same. So uh, this is fantastic because it means that we can calculate the integral absolute error just calculating one of the areas and multiplying by two. Uh, and then this was what we considered to calculate our rules. Uh, we consider the integral absolute error um, idea and then we calculate the first area, the area which is going from the time when the uh, disturbance arrives into the system until when the curve is crossing to the zero or the reference once. And, and it's the, the, the time t0 that we are representing here. So just calculating this fair integral term, uh, we will obtain the double of that value and then we will able to get the integral absolute error of the response. So depending of if you are we are working with the uh, non-interactive control scheme or the classical control scheme, 
we should uh, work with the open loop or the closed loop response. So, because of that, then we we will we work uh, for the Turing rules with these two responses, with the open loop response of the control scheme. Uh, in the case of working with the classical, uh, sorry, the uh, non-interactive control uh, approach, or in the case of working with the classical control scheme, we should consider the the the, the closed loop dynamics of the system. So then the idea is just to obtain the time domain response for the two cases and then to uh, minimize the integral absolute error, getting the, the, the values of the fee forward compensator, uh, which uh, uh, gives the minimum value for that, for that uh, metric. So as a result, we obtain many different uh, rules for this metric, for the integral absolute error. But in the following slide, I would like to show you the, the, the best two tuning rule that we obtained during these eight years. In the case of the classical control scheme, we obtained this nice uh, rule. Uh, in the rule, we can see very interesting uh, uh, results. The first one is the following. The rule, the rule, uh, in the rule, we fix the, the zero and the classical design, making it equal to the time constant of the uh, main process dynamics. And then in the case of the pole of the zero, we are reducing. Here is the case where we are uh, working with the time delay inversion problem. And then the rule is saying that we need to reduce the pole, making it faster, making it the respond faster uh, by this factor. It's considering the, the differences between the delays over 1.7. Uh, this will allow us to make the respond faster and then on the other hand, this is the, my favorite uh, equation because it represents that interaction of that connection, better say, between the feedback controller and the feed forward compensator. This is the classical way to design the, the, the gain of the feed forward compensator. And here we can see that we need to reduce that gain by this factor. And this factor depends on the uh, uh, integral gain of the uh, PA controller multiplied by the integral error, which is the, the contribution of the integral ten of the PA controller when a disturbance signals arrive. So, and we are able to estimate the integral error value according to this equation. So, all the the the, the tuning rule can be calculated based on the process parameters, as you will see. In the next slide, the response is, is, is quite good. On the other hand, uh, rule 12 is the best one for the non-interactive control scheme. In this scheme, we don't have any interaction at all between the feedback and the feed forward compensator, thanks to the H block that we mentioned before. And then we can keep the same uh, rule for the feed forward game. Again, we also keep the, the, the original value for the zero. And then the only thing we do here is just to tune the pole of the feed forward compensator. And we will tune the pole in a similar, using a similar expression and the one we obtain here. But now we have three different possibilities. To just obtain a conservative response, which means that non oversoup at all, but uh, or better say is the, the faster response we can get without any overshoot at all. In that case, alpha will be four. On the other hand, uh, we can just uh, minimize the integral absolute error as before, as you can see it's the same value, or to get a very fast response to minimize the integral square error. error. And then this is the, 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 the expression we get for the alpha. So, uh, this is the best tuning rules, I can say, from the table and from the results we have obtained in these years. And here you can see a comparison uh, with, uh, of those rules, which are... Uh, so in this case, for the classical control scheme, we are comparing the rule with the classical feedforward compensator design. And you can see how the oversuit is practically uh, reduced and the response is much faster. And here you can see uh, some numbers about the, the integral absolute error is reduced in a factor of 30, 35 percent 
and in the case of the oversuit is almost 50% uh, reduced. On the other hand, in the case of the non-interactive control scheme with, with the rule number 12, uh, we are comparing the results with respect to Alila compensator. Remember that we were able to accelerate res the response but without getting any oversuit with one of the values for alpha. Or we can get a moderate response trying to minimize the, in the inter-absolute error or getting a faster response minimizing the integral square error. And again, the responses are improved quite a lot in comparison with the, a classical lead like fee forward compensator. So as a result, uh, I only show you a couple of uh, Turing rules, but of course you can check the rest on the uh, on the paper that I mentioned you before, or you can just contact me or Professor Tore Haglund. We will be very happy to share with you all, all, all of the results. Uh, but at the end, we have two control schemes, um, about 15 different tuning rules. So we wanted to 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 to, to first uh, check if that tuning rules that were uh, obtained through different approximations and calculations to minimize some metrics, some metrics, if they were good enough when are compared with the real optimal values. This is one of the uh, ideas we want to check. And on the other hand, to make a comparison between the two control schemes. So first we uh, obtain the optimal values for the different metrics using the classical control scheme and the Brosilov control scheme, just uh, optimizing one parameter, the gain, two parameters, the gain and the pole, three parameters, the gain, the poles and the zero. And in the case on the Brosilov, it doesn't make sense to optimize the gains as we discussed before, because we are just in open loop. And then we obtain the optimal value minimizing the pole or the pole and the zero. Uh, for different metrics, in this case, the integral absolute error in the integral square error. These are all the results you can get. Um, and in blue are, is the one with the best response in the both cases. Um, then what we did was to compare our tuning rules, all of our tuning rules with these optimal uh, results. And here you can see the comparison and you can observe those tuning rules that I mentioned to you before, 7 and 12 for the integral absolute error, are practically the same that the result obtained with the optimizer. And on the other hand, we, we also compare the result with the integral square error. The responses are not as good as the integral absolute error, but in some cases are really, really, really close. Then, uh, on the other hand, we made a quantitative comparison and here you can see all our uh, well tuning rules uh, uh, we, you can um, check that the best value uh, uh, is is obtained here are the ones for the classical control scheme and here are the one for the non interactive control scheme for here we can observe how rule 7 is the one uh, getting a, a minimum value for the integral uh, absolute error and also a good relationship between performance and control effort. However, another interesting thing that is observed from the table is that if we check the results of the tuning rules with respect to the classical fee forward uh, compensator design, the rules suggest to decrease the values of all of the parameters, the gain, the poles, and the zero in the case of, of, of if the zero is modified. So it's something very interesting. We need to decrease, and not all, all, only that, but the ratio also between the pole, the pole and the zero is a very important factor. And this is also something that we observe. And you can see that in the following three plots, where we are comparing the best results for the classical uh, control scheme and the Brosilov uh, schemes for the two these two metrics, integral absolute error, integral square error. Uh, and then here in the streams, in values 6 and 10, are the values of the original league lag compensator. And then you, you can observe it, that if we fix 
one value to the original design, the curves are telling us that you need to reduce the other value quite a lot in order to minimize the, the, the metric. And this is observed also here. If we fix this value to 10, we need to reduce a lot the pole uh, in order to minimize the, the, the corresponding metric. Uh, uh, and so this is something interesting and also uh, corresponds to the, to the uh, quantitative results we observed in, in, in the previous tables. And also here it, it's interesting to see that to minimize that metric, we need to find a ratio between the poles and the zero, which is something that it wasn't uh, wasn't discussed in the literature uh, before, and it's something also very interesting because it has a very very strong relationship relationship with the control effort of the fifth forward compensator. So, and this re uh, ratio is especially important in, in, in the case of the Brosilov skins, as you can see here, where the effect of the pole and the zero is much bigger than in the case on the classical control scheme. So in order to contribute uh, for this comparison, we also uh, have developed uh, some performance indices to compare, not, all, not, not only to make a comparison between the control schemes, but also between the rules uh, and to help us about how to decide using one method, one rule of another or one scheme or another. Uh, this is the metric that we designed. Let me tell you that the important thing of this index is that we have obtained equations for to estimate the integral absolute error of the fee forward compensator, fee forward sorry for control scheme and the feedback control scheme that can be calculated based on the process parameters in advance. So the, the idea of the powerful uh, or the power of this matrix is that you can decide in advance first is if the serve to implement a fee forward compensator with respect to the fee forward or a classical feedback control scheme or if you if it deserves to use one control scheme or another or one tuning rule or another so according to this expression uh, we will improve the response uh, for the disturbance rejection problem using a classical control scheme once uh, this uh, index approach, uh, approaches to, to one. Uh, so as I told you before, we have obtained equations to estimate the integral or calculate the integral absolute error for a classical feedback control scheme that uses a PI controller. Uh, for the classical feed forward control scheme using the rule number seven, this is the expression we get, or for any value of the feed forward compensator, for the uh, uh, non-interactive control scheme. So if we use these expressions together, together with the previous index, in the same example we use uh, during the presentation, we obtain the following results. And you can observe how rule seven and rule 12 approximate very, very well to the estimations. The estimations using the equations are represented with a separate script E, and R means the real values that we calculate uh, through simulations. So you can see how the estimations are quite good, but also how rule seven and rule 12 are the one improving quite a lot uh, uh, the performance of, of the response because they are giving uh, values very close to to one in the proposed index. But this index can be also used to compare the, the two control schemes, because sometimes we don't know how to, when to use one control scheme or, or, or another. So if we make a relationship between the, the, the estimations of the integral absolute error equation of the two control schemes, we can obtain this nice expression, which means that the classical control schemes uh, provide a better performance, a better results when the uh, when we have uh, slower uh, responses uh, from the coming from the disturbance. It means that we have a large value of, of TD with respect to the uh, time delay for LU, and this can be uh, easily observed uh, with one example. Let's 
take this example where uh, here uh, we have uh, the time delay of PU and the time constant of PD uh, free and they are varying, uh, they are modifying in, in these uh, figures. Here we have a case with a very fast disturbance coming in, in, in the system, a very slow disturbance and a, a disturbance with a medium value. In the case where we have a very fast disturbance signal, here we, ha we have observed that the non-interactive skin is the one providing a larger uh, uh, value for the index, of providing a better response. In the opposite case, if we have a very slow disturbance, it's much better to use the classical control scheme with respect to the non-interactive control scheme. And in the medium case, it depends on the ratio between the time delays. And when that ratio is, is, is small, it's much better to use the non-interactive control scheme. But for the rest of the cases, the classical control scheme is, is also getting a better response. So in the next in the next slide, I will show you an example. Uh, here we have a case where the load disturbance is fast with respect to the rest of the dynamics, and in this case we can see how the non-interactive control scheme is providing a better response. However, when the disturbance is slow, we can observe that the non-interactive control scheme is not working uh, very well, and in this case the classical control scheme is much better to be considered because we will uh, obtain a, a, a better response. So, uh, as a conclusion of this uh, talk, I really uh, hope that you enjoy the, the idea of uh, why we need to tune fee forward compensators, which is not typically analyzed in literature. So, uh, I presented you a motivation uh, for that, and uh, how we have two different control schemes to be considered in this uh, research and in this uh, uh, analysis, how we can just get different tuning rules that can be calculated based on the control parameters and the process dynamics for both control schemes or for different metrics. Those rules have provided uh, uh, very nice uh, approximations in comparison with the real optimum uh, tuning parameters. Uh, and then we were also able to, to um, provide some indices to, to uh, help in the selection of the control schemes and in the different tuning rules. So I really hope that you enjoy this idea and that can be useful for you uh, in the future. And if you have any question or any doubt, don't hesitate to contact me. Here also you have uh, some references that can be useful for you. Uh, to analyze this topic more uh, in detail. And finally, uh, let me just uh, inform you that the next uh, IFAC uh, conference on advances PID control will be held in Almeria next year in June. So you are very, very welcome uh, um, to come. Okay, uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention. Uh, I really hope that this talk has been useful for you. Uh, yes, uh, see you around. Bye bye.